And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success Morning Coffee. I feel like I have to do an intro for that because I feel like this Shaping Success is the interview portion of this podcast, which we did drop an interview yesterday. And you should go check it out. Uh, interviewed Robert Watson, who tomorrow we actually do a show every Wednesday now, which I kind of think about what am I going to do with that as well. I need to probably make an intro for that one because it's a little bit different. So there's basically kind of three shows going on with Shape and Success. If I do an interview, it's actually Shape and Success. If I do Morning Coffee, then it's Morning Coffee on the Shape and Success Network, I guess. And then also with Robert Watson, we're doing the Ars Victoria Book Review. Ars, <laughs> Ars Victoria's Book Review. It's early in the morning. My brain is not quite there yet, which, uh, you know, eh, maybe I'll just drink one of these. So it's funny. Uh, I have been drinking this for about a month now. What's up, Nikki? Thanks for hanging out. This is Magic Mind. And it's, uh, it's a great little energy shot. It has um, a couple different things in it. It's late L-thylene, Bococopa manier, ashwagandha. Lion's mane mushroom is really the big thing. So shake this bad boy up and have a little drink of this and you have it with your coffee. So it goes good with the morning coffee. But the funny thing about it is I've been having it and like yesterday I had it and then I started to think about it because you don't really think about it a little bit very hard, very much. But what I found out was that I usually have a Red Bull. So I'll have like four or five cups of coffee. This is going to sound really bad. I have like four or five cups of coffee. I'll have a Red Bull and still kind of be, you know, tired. And yesterday I was thinking about it. It's like, I didn't really need the Red Bull yesterday. Because like with regular caffeine, you get this crash, right? And so um, I've been drinking that and it's been, crash is gone. So Really good stuff. It doesn't taste bad. It looks, you know, like you, you always look at like green and you're like, oh, that cannot be good. Um, but it's pretty good stuff. And so for the month of uh, January, when you buy uh, three months on their website, then you get one month free, which is great because it's really worth it. Um, you can use code shaping success 20. That's S H A P I N G S U C C E S S 20 to get that discount. So yesterday brought in for me issues. It's just kind of one of those deals. And when you're the person that a lot of people talk to about different situations and what's going on and you're kind of in the know on things, it, it can be stressful. I thought a lot about like how as a person – people come in and they, they, they look for you, they look to you for advice. And that's kind of one of the things that my life has been, you know, I've always been the person who seems to have it all together and is on top of it and is working towards making things better and working harder and doing all those things. And I was trying to think about like how I would have processed things a few years ago, a few months ago. Um, a few weeks ago, when things are put in front of you and you have to try and figure out how to deal with those life struggles and, and there's different ways you can go, right? Like you could, you could sit there and you could just kind of let it destroy you and let it work you over and not be able to move forward. Or you can embrace it, embrace the suck, try and figure out how to reinvent the wheel. and. For me, it's always been that way. It's always been one of those things like, what can I do to fix this situation? What can I do to make this better? And there is struggles in life. And there are things that you can do. But I, I, never, I never look at like quitting as an option. The one thing is, though, is that can get overwhelming sometimes. Because like, all right, what am I going to do this time? How am I going to do it this time? And like everyone struggles. Everyone's going through things. But everyone, you know, processes it differently and handles it differently. And so I wanted to talk, you know, about like some of the things that struggles do for you and how 
they can be tough, right? They can be something that can stop you. They can be a barrier or they can be something that move you forward. And I've talked to like multiple people about anxiety and I don't necessarily know that I understand it, but I get it. Like I can get where people can let that stop you, right? Because when you're in the midst of something and you're in that struggle and you don't know a way out, it can be really overwhelming. I had a, I had a friend that I know that like sometimes they have these panic attacks and they have to go, like they have to take days off. They have to restructure their day. They have to figure it out. And, you know, it's, it's kind of one of those deals that like I'll never understand. And, and someone, well, I mean, I understand, like I said, I understand it, but I don't like, I've never had that issue because the majority of the time I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it better. So struggles are something that we all kind of have, but how we handle them and how we deal with them are completely different. And so I don't know where I got to the point where, because I, you know, I mean, like three months ago, I was in a situation that I'm very well could be back in that situation again, and I'm handling it differently than what I was handling it then. But at the time I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to make this happen? How am I going to make this work? What can I do? And just not having the thought process to quit. And what happens is you end up like doing like four or five different things and thinking of like, what can I do to make this work? And I hammered out each four, each four or five of those things. And now I have a plan. Now I know what I'm going to do. And I think about that plan and I think about how that's going to work. And then you start doing something and then it's like, I need, I need to find a, a cash injection, right? To create something, right? I need to figure out how to find that money. And yesterday, like the situation was like, I called someone and I asked him and I talked to him about it. My first go-to and I'm like, you know what? This is, what do I do? You know, how do I find this money that I need? And I only need it for like a week because once I get what I need, I just, you know, I can turn around and pay him back. The funny thing is though, is I'm like the first person I'm going to go to, this is going to be easy, no big deal, whatever. I get kicked back. And they're like, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And it's like, what does it matter to you? I think about these, this person has provided money to other people that I know. Uh, let's just say it's a family member. And when, when it comes to someone else, it's always a whatever. And it's like, I don't know. I just think about the stability that I have versus other people. And it's just, it's amazing to understand that people will do that. So like, I could have gone, damn it, I can't do this. There's nothing I can do. I'm stuck. I got to figure it out. What am I going to do? Or move on, right? And that's how life is. It's like, you can, you can sit there and you can wallow in the moment and you can worry about the struggle and what you're going to do and, and then get that anxiety about it and be stressed about it. Or you can just move on to the next thing. And it's, it's crazy how I, I'm different than you. I'm not the same as you. Like, that's how you got to think about it. Like, I'm, I, you may not be able to do the things that I do because you, it's not wired that way. And it wasn't always wired that way. And I guess what my point is, is like we talked about the growth mindset last week and that no matter what you do, the possibility is there. You just have to be willing to get around it. And so think about how far you have come. Think about who you are and what you have done. And how you take that verbiage out of your brain that, you know, it's like I was telling kids when I was teaching, it's like, they, I can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean you can't do that? It's like, add another word to that. I can't do that now. Why can't you do that now? Because you haven't honed those skills. You haven't created the thing that you need to do. And it's crazy because I was watching my son last night. And these are, <laughs> it's, it's so weird because you just, you start to notice things. And that's, I think that that's one of the things that a lot of people aren't anymore is observant. Like they just hear what they want to hear. They don't see everything. They don't expand the thought process. They don't think about everything around them and they don't see. But my son yesterday, you know, he's been climbing on an ottoman and jumping off. Like, dude, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And then you start to look at the process of like how he 
picks things up. Like you ask him to put, he's two, right? So you ask him to do two and it's very hard for him to go like this, but he can go five, right? That's easy. Hey, show me five, five. And so we, we talked to him. He just turned two. How old are you, Nolan? Five. He's like, no, you're two. And he goes, two? But you look at him, you're like, okay, can you show me what two is? And he goes like this and he just, he can't make it happen. Like he, and so we have to go over there and you have to bend his fingers down and then he figures it out, right? But he can't do it because he doesn't have the finger dexterity. He hasn't learned how to do that process yet, which is amazing to me because watching him like do the things that he did, he can't do that. But yesterday he's jumping on the floor, like he's hopping in, into, in the living room. And then he's running, you know, like, and you see him pick up his feet. And it's like, these are all things that he couldn't do before, but he's learning. So everything that we do is a learned behavior, is a learned process, is something that we can do. And when, you're two, when you watch your two-year-old or you watch your kids do that, if you ever have kids, it's crazy because you start to realize that even though your mind, like you feel like you're stuck in a way, you, you can get out of it. You can grow out of it. You can learn to process information differently. And I think that that is something that we've lost because we end up getting stuck. As a, as a kid, we're fearless and we want to continue to do all those things. And we learn to walk and we learn to run and we learn to jump. And we, we don't have that fear of what can happen until after it happens, right? Now we, we've learned that. Yesterday, I was talking to Nikki. Nikki fell down. And I was telling her, you know, I fall every year, it seems like. Last year, two years ago, I got my knee replaced. I fell, landed right on my brand new knee. A couple weeks after, not a, maybe a month after I had the surgery. Still had the bandage on it. Still was concerned that, you know, still had the staples in there. Um, and I thought I ripped the damn thing open, which I will tell you this, your body's a lot more resilient than you think it is. Uh, because you go into physical therapy and you have your knee and you have this big old scar on there. And then you're sitting there thinking, oh, if I bend my knee too much, it's going to, I just pictured it what ripping open every single time, right? I fall on my knee in the middle of a snowstorm. It's negative two degrees outside right now, by the way, with like a half a foot of snow on the ground and we're getting more today. Um, but that's my thought is like, okay, now I have to be careful. You, so you start walking, right? You start walking differently. And if you watch older people, they've learned because they fell that they shuffle, right? And I've become that shuffler because I'm afraid that I'm going to fall. So now you get to that point where like last year, I fell again. And what did I learn? How did I? <laughs> so I had this nice pair of shoes that I had just gotten. And I realized real quickly that they didn't have very much traction. So do you think I wear those shoes anymore? Nope. <laughs> I wore them in the summer because it's a good process. But like thinking of that failure, what was the failure? I was getting out of my truck. I fell on my butt. I hit my arm on the running board. I thought it broke my arm. I thought it broke my butt. My pride was hurt pretty bad. But you make that adjustment, right? And so it was funny when Nikki fell yesterday, not the falling part, but the thought process in my mind was like, I'm waiting for that fall because like last Wednesday, I took the, gar I took the, <laughs> I took the garbage cans down the road and stuck them at the end of the lane, stepped off the gravel onto the asphalt and both feet started slipping. I'm like, oh shit, I'm going to fall. Picked it up, turned around. I was okay. And then, you know, you think, you think that you're not, you know, what could I do now? Here's the choice. Well, I could not go out there and put the garbage out there anymore because guess what? I'm going to fall and have fear of falling or I can just keep doing it. And so falls, falls sometimes teach you to slow down a little bit, but they also teach you to rethink the situation and what you're doing and how you evaluate that. And that's how life is, you know, um, you can call it whatever you want, faith, karma, visualization, you know. Um, but whatever you do is going to have an outcome that you have created. And a lot of times the bumps in the road are either a key to keep going down that path or to move over and go forward. Well, that's the thing. Wear better shoes. It's the same thing, right? Like that's the thought process is like, what do I do? That's the option, right? I can wear better shoes or I can just keep doing what I'm doing and hope that I'm going to be safe. So 
there's lessons in everything. It's crazy. And if you start to look at like the struggles as gifts or things like that, uh, Natty Creek, thank you for the follow and thank you for joining. Good morning. If you think about those struggles and the things that you're doing as a gift and how you can use them to still reach that goal that you're trying to reach, to attain them, to do the things that you want to do, it's a game changer. But you have to get past that moment that things are happening for you and not to you. Why are they happening for you instead of why are they happening to you? And I don't know. I just, it, it opens up your eyes. So I want you to think about that today. What can you do to help those struggles happen? Have them be something that's part of you that is something that is a good thing instead of a bad thing. And once you figure that out, it's going to be helpful because the struggles that I'm going through right now are completely different than the struggles I was going through three months ago, even though they're the same thing. Now I'm just finding a better way to deal with them. Oh, that's it. The greatest gift you can give someone is the power to be successful. Giving people the opportunity to struggle rather than giving them the things they are struggling for will make them stronger. Okay. So think about that as you go out there today. Um, yeah. A couple things. What is up, Wendy? If you guys haven't followed Wendy Coke, you should. She has a podcast that is awesome. She's over here on YouTube. If you guys want to join over on YouTube, you can. Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley. Make sure you subscribe. I want to get to 3,000 by, you know, the end of the next couple months here, which would be great. Um, but we're, we're pretty much done here. If you are looking for, um, if you're looking to refinance, because right now refinancing is something that is going on and um, interest rates are going down. And you are in the Treasure Valley. Gosh, I just messed this whole thing up. Here we go. Where is it at? Anyway, we'll do this tomorrow. But if you want to join the, if you want to join the Patreon, please do. I've got a couple of Patrons. We give those shout outs every single day. Patreon Nikki Pavlovich, the bacon lover here on TikTok, on YouTube. Also, Anna Malin, thank you very much. We also have our TikTok subbers over here as well, which we have a couple of those. Um, Nikki subscribes on TikTok as well. Vanna Twisted D and Michelle, thank you very much for your support. Tune in every morning, five o'clock mountain time, six central, seven Eastern. You're probably still sleeping on Pacific time, four o'clock for morning coffee. We do this every day. Tomorrow is going to be the Robert Watson we're going to go through chapter three of Ars Victorias with Robert Watson. Um, he was this week's guest on the podcast. You can go check that out. Um, there will be two episodes out today because I didn't get yesterday's morning coffee uploaded, which, you know, on the days that we do an interview, there's going to be a double up, double, double up on the episodes. Um, and then uh, back to it on Thursday and Friday. I actually have two interviews tomorrow. So um, it's going to be a busy day. It's going to be a busy day. Two interviews. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. We're almost to Wednesday. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success.